All right, I have a lot of difficulty trusting the Boise County Sheriff's Department, first off, with my arrest, and then subsequent conversations through emails after that. All right, they really seem to support a lack of uh, discretion. Um, they have a lot of bias towards their own, and it, it really makes me nervous. For example... I've been, uh, I think, emailing, like, the chief. It's uh, some Cosmira Smrakisi, or I don't know, some weird last name. You can see his picture on the website. He's got this big orange beard. And I've emailed him, and I've, I've told him um, that I wanted to uh, set up this council. And he comes back with, oh, you can mail a request letter to this address. And I'm like, well, it says in writing that... I need to request it. It didn't say I needed to mail a letter. So then he comes back and says, well, you can, okay, email this one dude, Mike, or something. So I emailed that one guy, and this whole time, he was like, well, I highly advise you to t go through your district, your, your public defender, okay? All right, he, he kept insisting. It's like practically every email. He kept insisting to go through the public defender, but I already asked the public defender about it, and he said it's a civil matter, all right, when it has to deal with the tow truck stuff. So um, I don't think the sheriff knows uh, how the law works very well. Maybe he's new. Maybe he's never dealt with this, this kind of activity before. Uh, but um, to not understand the difference between civil and criminal on his part is concerning, let alone me getting arrested for obstruction when it really didn't appear to be obstruction. Um, I was just trying to make conversation, and that's considered obstruction in, in Boise County. Pro probably a lot of Idaho, for all I know. Idaho has has a very police state type of uh, establishment here. But So I get a hold of Mike, I believe, through the emails, I'm like, all right, I'm interested in filing for an extension uh, after the court date, because I believe that I can make better arguments through the court date and then use those for the hearing to uh, try to get my tow truck charges uh, reduced or eliminated. But um, he says, well, he, he's not able to make changes because it's an Idaho statute. You don't have the ability to make changes to that statute. All right, and I know there's things at, such as extensions and delays. There's things that come up that allow you to make extensions. It happens all the time, but I don't know where it says in Idaho law that you can do it. I need to get better advice on that. All right, so <clears throat> I'm like, okay, fine. I don't know how to extend it. You're not. You don't have the power to. When's when's the time most convenient for you? to set up a time to uh, do this council for the tow truck. And he's, he was like, okay, he comes back with, all right, how about 8.15 in the morning in Idaho City on Memorial Day, of all things, on a, on a, a day where we're supposed to pay respects for the, the soldiers who died to fight for freedom, all right? In my opinion, this guy needs to take some time to read D-Day by Stephen Ambrose. I did a little book review. You can find that if you type in book review Travis Hines. and Well, you could type in D-Day, I suppose. But, I mean, I've, I've, I have I've don't have personal experience with uh, dead soldiers, with, with soldiers who have died and, and on duty. All right, I've kind of heard it about it in the military when I was in the Air Force. I, uh, I talked to this one guy, was one soldier who was, uh, like, serve, he was, he was on the base that, uh, that got, got ahead of truck that, that rolled up to the fence, um, and this fence was too close to some quarters, all right, and the terrorists knew it, this happened about, I don't know, 93, maybe, 94, and so they had a truck full of explosives, they pulled up to the fence and blew it up. And that wiped out a few, quite a few soldiers. There were uh, some security uh, force airmen on the top of the building who started uh, sounding the alarm as soon as they saw the truck rolling up to the fence. They died. 
and a few, uh, quite a few other people on that, that wall, that face of the building next to the fence also died. All right. There were, uh, accounts of like how, uh, like, I think it was pilots. It was some officers of, um, like blood prints of officers hands around the light switch. Cause they, they knew where their light switch was. But then their 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 blood prints their blood streaks were up and down around the light switch, okay. Which I, I bet the power was probably knocked out. It must have been a very uh, like horrific like experience for for those who um, may have survived for a little bit longer or survived longer. Um, I'm I'm not sure of the death counts, but that that's that's as close as I got while I was in the military to uh, that. That death while serving, you know, just the, the, listening to the guy who was who was there, he knew the the airmen, the the security uh, patrol airmen who were on top of the 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 building who sounded this alarm. Uh, but but going back to this 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 Mike guy on on the email, uh, I I I emailed him back. I felt that it was was a little insulting to to set up this uh, this council. On Memorial Day, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for his response. All right, so that's that's the end of this this conversation. But I have I have lost confidence in the Boise County Sheriff's uh, Department, up and down from from uh, sheriff to to deputy. Okay, it's it's really just just emailing, just having my first interaction with them, and then, and then the emails back and forth. It really makes me lose confidence in them. I'm I'm scared of that area because of how they're conducting themselves, and I have no power whatsoever on um, trying to uh, influence positive change. All I can do is complain. That's it.